In 2014, 100 young people came together at the Banyul Youth Summit to connect with their peers and discuss topics of interest and concern. Young people spoke passionately about issues including gender and social inequality, physical and mental health, employment, safety, education, recreation options and improvements to Banyul's physical surroundings. They spoke about what it was like to be a young person in Banyul and proposed recommendations to key community stakeholders. We want you to know that young people are motivated, enthusiastic, connected, dreamers, intelligent, mindful, brave, risk takers, and of course, we are leaders. While most of us are not, are not yet eligible to vote, we have many other ways to shape our community. Many of us are already active in decision making and community participation within our own communities. It is an honour to be able to participate in today's Youth Summit as we are confident we can make a real difference through our collective presence today. And what you're about to see now is a culmination of all that work. In their groups, on their chosen topics, they discussed um, any issues and concerns they might have on those specific things and that now they have formed recommendations that they would like to present to everyone here today on what they would like to see change. Our group talked about leadership. Um, we recommend this uh, establishment of an Australian African Banyu Young Women's Advisory Group who will work together on leadership development, community change, fundraising, positive education and social opportunities and much more. Thank you. Our table topic was safety and we focused more on wanting to not be violent and make situations worse and our recommendations were better education on how to be a diplomat and be able to talk yourself out of negative situations, potentially combined with self-defence skills, but this comes as a second option. And um, I was on the first uh, discussion panel for gender equality slash feminism um, with a fabulously group, fabulously opinionated group of uh, women. Um, the context basically of our discussion was mostly around the sexist attitudes that influence uh, members of the youth community, not just women. The fact that these attitudes also influence men, those that are gender fluid, those that are transgender, those that are homosexual. Um, the fact that these issues come into so many aspects of our lives that some may not even realise it. Um, we discussed the body policing, terminology in uniform policies, catcalling, sexual harassment, um, and the fact that a lot of students and a lot of individuals in the youth community don't know what is acceptable and what isn't. Our recommendation for these issues um, mostly involve that external sources of support. So the fact that not everything has to be dealt with internally. Students, particularly in high school, need to know that um, they have rights in terms of what they're entitled to, how they can't be discriminated against, and what's inappropriate and what is appropriate. Um, there needs to be discussion created, particularly through public forums, and creating that personalisation of the sexist, sexist attitudes. So women, men, whoever, who have been influenced by this, um, putting a face to a name and knowing about femininity, masculinity, rape, sexual responsibility and gender identity, all these issues that are influenced by sexism. Um, so this is done between Q&A panels, public forums, and there needs to be those channels opened between students and parents, between the local community and those in power. By opening those channels, then there's that enforcement for change. Our group focused on health and self-esteem. Our main issue was the impact of social media on young people's self-esteem and how to posit positively promote a healthy lifestyle. Um, our recommendation um, is for a young group of people to connect with local youth services and health professionals and um, to start a campaign program or group um, who can share information and support um, as well as organise events for young people because who doesn't like free stuff. Um, the group um, would use social media positively to remove negative stigmas because, um, for example, as um, the ideal perfect body that, that social media promotes and forces on young people. Um, we would also like to use inspiring youth and mentors to share their inspiring and relatable stories because um, it's easier and it's to listen to someone who's been through that and knows what it's like than to hear from other people who have no idea. Our talk was mainly based around a life skills development in secondary college. 
So uh, we were concerned that school curriculum doesn't currently prepare young people for independent living, meaning that when kids leave school or if they finish school that they're sort of left on their own. There's a bit of a grey area in not knowing how to pay a bill and not knowing how to apply for a college and sort of things that aren't necessarily taught in schools but are really important things that are sort of left up to parents and it's great if you have that sort of support at home but if your parents aren't necessarily really great at cooking or really great at cleaning or haven't had experience in knowing how to share a house with someone or move out of home we sort of felt that maybe it was some something that should have been stepped in before you left school so when you leave you're not left on your own and not really sure how to leave properly. So uh, we made a recommendation that the Banyol Youth Services develop a package of important information on independent living skills to provide to local secondary colleges. So that means that when people leave school they've got a bit of an idea on a bit of a way to start because it's so strange to leave from school for something you have to go to every day when two months ago you had to go, ask to go to the bathroom to then be out on your own and have to move house and have to pay your own bills and apply for a credit card and debit card and just knowing basic things that sort of adults automatically know that we really need to get to. So yeah. Young people brainstorming ideas about they, what they would like to do after school or on weekends they choose a disco for young people. My table topic was the Mel. Um, our context was the Mel feels um, outdated, unsafe and unattractive. Uh, lack of security, lighting and cameras. Toilets are dirty and lack of privacy. Our recommendation, well we like to call it the Mel makeover. Um, we want to create a modern makeover with a new image. More natural materials and outdoor meeting and eating areas. Um, Centralised play area for families. Free parking and Wi-Fi. More colour and more green areas. And my table topic um, speak about culturally appreciated um, recreation opportunities. Um, we simply recommend that the Banyuil Council explore making available space in Olympic Village so that young women have opportunities to be active and engaged in their community without barriers. We spoke about the barriers in to, for young women becoming active, which is simply just being um, only females and having no Restrictive um, restrictions are surrounded by us, which is much easier than you know being in private. So we would like to be in public and for us to have more access in recreational sports. Thank you. St Helena Secondary College held a student-led summit with students across all year levels. A list of recommendations were presented to the school administration, local and state government. From New Year's Eve 2015, under the State Government's Home Safe Plans, there will be 24-hour weekend metropolitan trains backed up by Home Safe trams and Home Safe buses. Feedback for improvements to Loyola Reserve was fed into Council's open space strategy. A register of young talent is being developed to connect young people to employment opportunities. An employment forum for young African Australian women is in the planning stages and a portal for local youth jobs can be found at banyalyouth.com. Interactive workshops and activities have been held in schools that focus on messages of good health and wellbeing. Yeah.